Right. Hello everyone. This is the this sysadmin, a good work. And I'm here to show you how to configure VLANs on Cisco switches. So basically VLANs are a way of segmenting your network or dividing it into subnets. But instead of using routers to divide the various networks, you'll only be using switches. So this is good for a, um, a corporate LAN where you have many buildings, but all those buildings will need to have different subnets because they are for different roles. Also, um, having VLANs will help you connect people in different buildings but doing the same function and those people will only be able to access their applications using their own uh, subnet which is completely different from everyone else's. So what we're going to do in this um, configuration video is we're going to configure the IP address on all the switches as well as the router and the pieces. Then we're going to configure the trunk ports and the access ports on the switches. Then we'll configure VTP on these switches. Then we'll configure the actual VLANs, assign ports to the VLANs, and then create sub interfaces on the router so that these machines can be able to communicate. So we're going to have uh, VLAN 15. This computer is going to be in VLAN 15. Um, and its IP address will be 10.10.15.2. This one will be 10.10.20.5 in VLAN 20. So we'll assume this is the sales uh, VLAN. So this one should only be accessed by salespeople or salespeople are supposed to connect to that one. And this one will be for marketing guys. So um, our router and our switches will be in the 192.168.100.0 network. And all of them, I'm just using the slash 24 uh, net mask. So let's start by configuring the IP addresses on our switches and our routers. <clears throat> so I'll start with the switch. Uh, sorry, I'll start with the router at the top. Um, okay, so we'll go into the command line. No. All right. So we do config T. Now to enter the IP address, we first need to know what port this port is. So this is port. Um, gig zero zero this is the name of the port gig zero zero so i'll go into interface gig zero slash zero and then i'll assign the ip address 192.168.100.1 and then i'll enter the subnet mask g slash 24 then i'll issue a no shut command and then i'll exit the configuration so we have configured the ip address for this one now let's configure the IP address for this switch. So for the switches, when you're configuring the IP address, we use uh, VLAN 1. We don't assign to a port, but we use uh, VLAN 1 for that. So we say int VLAN 1. So we refer to VLAN 1 as an interface so that we can give the, uh, the switch an IP address. And the IP address will be 192.168.100.2. 255.255.255.0 and then we also issue a no shut command and this switch now has an IP address. Let's go to the next one, this one. Let's make sure all of them have got IPs before we do any configuration. So this is configure in full, this will be configure terminal, but I just prefer to write it in short config T gets me to the configuration mode, int VLAN 1, and then the IP address would be 192.168.100.4.255.255.255.0, and then no shut, no shut down, and we exit. And then we go to the next one, which is this one. So let's just do it quickly for all of them.
okay so this is the last interface and it's now up so all our switches now have um uh now i have ip addresses if we do a show show ip interface brief should be able to see that we've got a a vlan that has been assigned so this is what we'll use as our ip address then we will move to configuring the pcs so this pc is in the 100 subnet which is fine so we'll just go to the physical config fast ethernet give it the ip address 192.168.100.6 and slash 24 subnet and then we do um, we enter the gateway here so the gateway for the for the hundred dot six is what hundred dot one, which is this one. So we just enter the hundred dot one IP address here, and this one is all done for. Then we go to the VLAN fifteen PC. Okay. We also enter its IP address ten dot ten dot fifteen dot two. Then we just do a slash twenty four subnet mask. <clears throat> then we come to the gateway. So this VLAN will give it the um the gateway 10.10.15.1 which will configure on our router in just a moment so this one is done and then for this one we do the same thing we we'll, uh configure the fast ethernet 10.10.20.5 255.255.255.0 and then the gateway for the vlan 20 will be 10.10 dot 20 dot one and so we have managed to give all our machines ip addresses so this machine should be able to ping 100.1 but these two are not yet able to communicate on the network because they don't have their gateway uh, configured and we have not configured their routing as well so that they can be able to communicate on the network so the next thing we're going to do is to configure the trunk ports and access ports on the switches so on this switch we have got the trunk ports are the ports that connect to another switch or to a router. So right on this switch, I've got one, two, three, four um, trunk ports. So what we're going to do, we'll take, uh, first let's look at the port numbers. So this one is FA01. This one is uh, FA02. Uh, this one, FA03 and this one FA04. So we have got four ports on our switch that we need to, to configure. So we are already in configuration mode. So we'll do an um, to configure our trunk ports. We'll go into the interface, which is our interface. First one is FA01. When we're in that interface, so for some switches, you may need to run the command uh switch port trunk encapsulation and then you put the, the encapsulation which is usually dot one q so that you can be able the, uh, the encapsulation for the trunk port is configured but on this switch um it's an old switch so it's the only encapsulation that's available is dot one q so there's no need for that the command will, have, will refuse to run so we just go straight and configure switch port mod trunk Okay, so port FA01 is now a trunk. We go to port FA02. We make it a trunk as well. Switch port mod trunk. So you can just press the tab button to auto complete your commands. Let's go to FA03. Um, we also do a switch port mod trunk. Okay. Then let's do FA04. <clears throat> In FA04, we do um, again our switch port mode trunk. Okay, so we have configured our trunk ports on this switch. So what we now need to do is first to make to see how many ports it has and then turn all those other ports into um, access ports. This is good for your security so that nobody can just come in and plug in any uh, router or switch to your switches. 
So we have taken the first four. So that means from first Ethernet 05 to first Ethernet 024, we can turn those into access ports as well as the gigabit uh, ports. So let's do that. So what we do is we go to, we take interface range this time, and then we say FA05 to FA0 slash 24. So we are configuring an inter, a range of interfaces all at once. And we want to make these uh, access ports. So just say switch port, mode access, and enter. So all of them are now um, access ports. So we're going to do the same for all our other switches. So we'll come to this one. And uh, the only trunk port is the one that's connected to this switch. So it's this one, which is uh, FA01. So on FA01, we'll do int FA0 slash one. Then we do switch port mode access. Okay, so, oh, sorry, this one is not supposed to be access, but it's supposed to be trunk. So let me change that. So it's now a trunk port. And then we, do, we exit. So the trunk port for this switch is configured. For this one is configured. For this one, it's only one is all that's going to the switch. So it's um, FA01. We do the same thing. Int FA01, switch port mode, trunk. Okay, this one is also configured trunk ports. And then we come to the last switch on which we'll configure trunk ports. Go into the configuration mode. And then we choose the interface, which is interface. This one is the one connected to the switch. So it's FA01. Um, we go into interface configuration mode. Then we do switch port mode trunk. Okay, so all our trunk ports are now configured on the, switch, on the network. So the next thing that we also need to do, so we also need to configure the access ports. But for this, for the sake of the length of the video, I'm just going to skip doing so for these switches. But what I did on this switch is the same that you can do on the rest of the switches. So now let's configure VTP on our switches. So if we click on the top switch, the aggregate switch, and we we go into um, privileged mode, then we say show VTP status because now I want to configure VTP. So when you say show VTP status, what we get, what I'm mainly concerned with is the VTP mode and the VTP domain name. So the VTP mode, if it's a server, it means um, it can propagate VLANs which are configured on it to other uh, switches in the network. So the VTP protocol basically makes sure that VLANs are propagated to other switches. So you only have to configure VLANs on one switch and then they are propagated to all the other networks that have got VTP configured on them. Um, in the network. So only server mode switches can propagate. If it's a client mode, then it cannot propagate. But uh, so you should try by all means to minimize the number of uh, server mode switches to avoid propagating uh, some wrong configurations. We also need to um, configure the VTP domain name. And this domain name is the one now that all the switches in the network will know. And if they are in the same domain, then they will receive the updates that are being propagated. <clears throat> so what we're now going to do is to go into the VTP configuration mode. So we'll do first go into global configuration mode, and then we see, we set our VTP domain. Okay, so VTP domain, and we're going to call it Taku. So that's my VTP domain, and then I press enter. So now my VTP domain has been changed to Taku. And if we do a show, a do show VTP status, you see that now the domain name here is Taku. If you want to change the domain, uh, the VTP operating mode, you just say uh, VTP mode. Then with a question mark, you can see that you can enter client. It becomes just a client. It just receives. It doesn't propagate. A server is the one that propagates and transparent and transparent. So <clears throat> for hours, it's already in server mode. So I just want to leave it like that. Now the beauty of uh, VTP is that since we have configured VTP on this switch and all these other switches are in the same uh, network, 
naturally they all have to have the same VTP domain name. So that means the settings have been propagated, should, should be propagated to all the switches. So if we do a do show VTP status on this uh, switch, we'll also get Taku and it has automatically been propagated to the switch. So, and it has also been automatically propagated to all the switches. So all these switches now are in the VTP domain name Taku, which, uh, which they received from this switch. So now we want to configure the VLANs. So we, now the VLANs, since we have got VTP working, are going to be automatically propagated to the rest of the switches. So we just have to configure them on this switch and they'll be everywhere else. So if we do a do show VLANs, okay, do show VLAN, you will see that these are the VLANs that we have, the default ones, the 1002, these are just um, VLANs that are supposed to be there by default due to standard issues. So we want to configure our VLAN 15 and our VLAN 20. So all we have to do is to say VLAN, to create VLAN 15, just say VLAN 15, enter, and VLAN 15 has been created. And to give it a name, just say name, cells okay so now we have vlan 15 for vlan 20 okay let's exit vlan mode so vlan 20 we just say vlan 20 enter and then whilst in vlan 20 configuration mode we give it a name marketing okay now we have the name so let's do a do show vlan and now you see we've got these two vlans vlan 15 and vlan 20 that have been configured in named cells and marketing respectively. So if we go to another switch, let's take this one. Because of VTP, these switches now should already have the VLAN configurations prop propagated to them. So as you can see, we never configured this one, but now it has got the 15 and 20 VLANs. The same goes for the rest of the switches. They should have the, the VLAN com configurations propagated to them. So as you can see, they're all there. So that means all our switches now have the VLAN configurations for these two VLANs, but still these cannot um, communicate with each other because we have not yet assigned a PC to a specific port or to assign a specific port to, a, to the VLANs that we want to use. So we need to assign certain ports on this switch to VLAN 15 and on this switch to VLAN 20. So on this switch, we're just going to assign for this PC and this PC is connected to port FA02. So now we want to assign ports to our VLANs. So we'll go into our switch in configuration mode again. Then we'll go into our switch, which is FA02, our port. So we just say um, int FA0 slash 2, enter. And in that mode, then we say switch port. Ax uh, we want to make it an access port because we just want it to access uh, devices, so it, will, it should not be a trunk port. So it's switch port access, then this is VLAN 15. So that means interface FA02 is now an access port specifically for VLAN 15, okay? And we do the same for, sorry, on this switch. So on this switch, this port is port FA02 as well. So we assign it to VLAN 20. Okay, so we say int FA02 and say switch port access VLAN 20. Okay, so that port is now in VLAN 20 as well. All right, so that means we have managed to assign ports to our VLANs, but still even doing after doing so, these uh, machines can still not communicate with each other. Why? They can only communicate with machines that are also in the same VLAN as them, but they cannot communicate outside that VLAN. For example, if we do a ping from um, the sales machine to the marketing machine, we say 10, 10, dot 20, dot five, you will find that there'll be no reply coming because there is no routing that allows them to communicate. The default gateways are not configured anyway. Yes, we have assigned the default gateway to be 10.10.15.1 for the cells, but it's not configured anywhere on the network. So now what we want to do is we want to configure the default gateways. So for the 10.10.15.1, and we will start with, uh, so we'll configure the, get, the gateway on our router. So all the gateways for our VLANs as um, configured on the router. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to our router, 
and then we need to con we need to configure so we need to configure on this router the default gateway for 15.1 but what we now need to understand is that we are using a router on the stick type of configuration where we are going to use one interface but that one interface is going to have all the gateway ip addresses for the various subnets that we have here so to do that we create what are called sub interfaces for our vlans so the main interface is for the main um so the main subnet which is the 192.168.100.0 subnet but the sub interfaces now will be for the 10.10.15.0 and the 10.10.20.0 subnets uh, vlans so to configure the sub interfaces what we do is we say and uh, this is so we need to know the interface name gig 00 so we're going to gig 00 int gig 00 then we give a dot so for, for the uh, sales gateway we're going to give the interface a dot 15 because it's in vlan 15 so we just call it 15 so it's int gig 00 dot 15 and then now we are in the sub interface configuration mode as you can see here so in this mode we first need to make sure that the encapsulation is also configured on some switch on some routers you need to run the command encapsulation dot one q and then maybe 15 for our villain so for, on this one we need to run that command so you run it then after running it you then apply your ip address which is 10.10.15.1 so that's our gateway and this is the subnet the slash 24 subnet and after we're done with that then our sub interface is already configured so we do the same for the other ones gig uh, 0 slash 0 dot for the 20 vlan then we also do the encapsulation uh, dot 1q20 then we assign our ip address which is 10 dot 10 dot 20 dot 1 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 0 and our interfaces are now all configured so now we should be able to communicate between our uh, various vlans so if we try to ping from our router and we try to ping our pc in vlan 15 which is 15.2 we should get a response from there sorry so that should be should be in here, ping 10.10.15.2. Give it a moment, and as you can see, it has managed to successfully ping uh, that router. And if we come to our PC, before it failed to communicate with, uh, the, with this machine, but now if we ping, should be able to communicate with it, because now we have configured the, um, the router and the routing address as well as the default gateway on our router so that when it wants to communicate with this one it goes to the router which knows the address and then comes back and configures on that one okay so as you can see it has managed to ping so that means our vlans have been successfully configured we have successfully configured our network and that's basically all you need to do for vlan configurations thank you very much for listening to this video uh, please subscribe to my channel for more sysadmin stuff and for more IT related content. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.